Having worked at a big four accounting firm and two big four banks in the past, there are some notable ways that companies and organizations keep their employees within their bubble so that they don't find a job anywhere else. It is the exact reason that these middle class habits keep us tied to a job that we don't even like and actually pushes our interests and our ambitions further in the background, almost never being explored. Let's go through what these habits are and how you can avoid them. One, working for less than your worth. It is common practice to see employers pay their employees lower than what they're actually worth. They will pay you the least amount possible and just enough so that you won't leave that organization. And then when it does come time to yearly annual reviews and you get that three to 4% salary increase and you get excited about it, unfortunately, this doesn't actually cover the lifestyle costs that are rising due to inflation because inflation in Australia is currently at 7%. So you having an increase of three to 4% is not allowing you to fully cover your lifestyle costs, but why don't we question this when we get our salary increases? It is this middle class habit that we accept at face value and we don't question outside the box or ask our employers why is that the case? The thought of having a fixed income, the thought of having consistent income come through in your bank account fortnightly or on a monthly basis and thinking about the idea of even changing a job and all the admin work surrounding it will have you remain at your current job even if you're not getting paid what you're worth. Alternatively, if you're finding that you're putting the hours into your job, you're working hard and you're getting the job done and you're meeting deadlines, then there's no harm in you applying for another job and switching roles. Because it is estimated that if you do leave your job and find another one, the salary increase goes up by 10 to 20%. And in some cases, 80% in my case. This happened to me when I left KPMG and moved into a big four bank in Australia. I was able to increase my income from $60,000 to $100,000. $110,000. Your previous employer will happily pay someone else an increase of about 10 to 20% in their salary, but they won't pay you that increase. So why would you accept a minimal increase in your salary? It's important to not get caught in the workplace loyalty and think that you owe it to the organization because they hired you in the first place. It doesn't work like that. You've got to look out for yourself. Two, staying in a job longer than you need to. Once you're familiar with how things work at your job, you're comfortable with your manager, your team, you've got a routine going, it can be difficult to find the motivation to find another job. It is estimated that it takes humans about 12 to 18 months to fully understand the requirements of their role. So this essentially means that after one and a half years of remaining in your role, it is then the time to ask for that promotion or to switch teams or switch jobs entirely or work up the corporate ladder so that you are faced with new challenges and new opportunities because that is ultimately going to lead you to growth. However, it is this middle class habit that makes us hesitant or unambitious to leave our role because we're comfortable in our role. We know how things work. However, when did being comfortable ever lead to success or growth? A quote by Tony Robbins states that to get comfortable being uncomfortable, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable. It's the only way to grow personally, professionally and romantically. To avoid being comfortable in your job, it's important to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Network with people, seek new opportunities, apply for roles and push yourself. Not only will this lead to personal growth, but also financial success as well. Three, spending more than you make. The first thing that comes to mind when you get that new job and you see that salary come through is how are you going to spend that money? This might mean you want to buy yourself a handbag, take yourself out on an expensive dinner, or perhaps you want to buy a car. Now, you might not be able to actually afford that dream car, but you are able to afford the repayments on that car if you were to take out the car on finance. However, the system is designed in a way that yes, if you do go ahead and pay for those repayments, in the long term, you'll be paying more for the car than the original amount. You'll be working at your day job just to make those repayments each month so that you don't fall behind. This in fact is the number one wealth killer for many people and is the exact reason why they are left working at their nine to five longer than they actually need to be. Secondly, even if you were to get that salary increase, did you know that you can actually borrow a house that's maybe five times or six times more than your salary? 
just by getting a small percentage increase, you're able to afford a bigger, better house. How wild is that? Therefore, it's important to not get caught up with the idea of lifestyle creep, which is the more money you make, the more money you want to spend. Think of it like production versus consumption. Production is how much money you make through your day job and consumption is how much you're spending on things like your repayments or luxury spending. To avoid this habit, it is important to consider the bigger picture and to think about whatever you do now will have ripple effects for future years to come. Four, relying on one income source. If we've learned anything from the pandemic and staying home for two years, it's that relying on one income source is the most riskiest thing that you can do or put yourself in. With interest rates rising, a recession looming, layoffs seem to be around the corner if they aren't already. The middle class habit here is putting all of your eggs in one basket, that being of your employer, and giving them the responsibility of your livelihood and putting the financial responsibility into their hands. By doing this, you are only one incident away from losing your job, therefore it's so important important to diversify your income streams. So this means taking up a second job if you have to. This could be perhaps doing Uber driving, babysitting, or even setting up an online business where you can work from home and manage that remotely. What works for a lot of people is to invest their money, either in dividend stocks or investing in real estate. Giving someone else the responsibility of your finance is super risky and should be avoided at all costs. Five, think about future you. We are all familiar with the idea of compound interest in that if you start investing today, you'll reap the benefits in years to come through the mechanism of compound interest. You'll ensure that you've got funds for your retirement or perhaps a rainy day. However, with a lot of us knowing this information about compound interest, why haven't we started today? We know that this can make our lives easier, but we haven't taken the action. And that is because we think there are a lack of tools and resources available for us to get started. Like how do you know what you should invest in or how much you should invest in? The middle class habit here is being oblivious to the information around us. In fact, there is so much knowledge, so many resources around us that we actually are unaware of it. For example, this video, there are multiple YouTubers out there who create content around this. You can read books, attend seminars, or speak to someone who has already done what you want to achieve. These are some of the ways that you can get started. And once you do, and you've gained that momentum, you're building wealth for future you. Hopefully this video has acted as a bit of a trigger or a reminder that what you're doing in your day job or in your lives is potentially keeping you stuck in the rat race. So take the time out to reflect and think about changing your narrative. What is it that you can do right now that will have ripple effects for you in future years to come? If you enjoyed this video, there's another video you might enjoy, which is how I plan to become a millionaire by the age of 30. I'll ensure to leave that up below and linked down below as well. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.